Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. I am making this video because I was super frustrated because I was just trying to do a quick search to find out what a cash on cash return is. When I was a new investor, this is a term I hear tossed around all the time, so I wanted to do a quick search to find a video that in less than a minute would tell me what is a cash on cash return. A lot of content creators like these have done videos on what a cash on cash return is, but they all take 10 to 20 minutes to get to the point. So here it is. A cash on cash return is the profit you make in a year divided by how much it costs to get the property. Done. Thanks for coming to my Dion talk. Now people can find out what a cash on cash return is in less than a minute. Accountants would call this the yield and in rental property investing, it's usually referred to as the cash on cash return on investment. C-O-C-R-O-Y. Cockroy? Not sure how to say it, but you usually just see it written down anyways. I made sure to get to the point right away and give you what the definition is. But now I'm going to explain how I use the formula to decide if a property is worth pursuing or not. I made this video to show how the numbers on a property that I actually have worked. But in this video, I'm going to use very simple math so that it's easier to follow. And even though I use this method to decide if a property is worth pursuing or not, at the end of this video, I'm going to explain how this method is flawed and I'll go over how I compensate for the flaw. To get to the cash on cash return on investment, we really only need to look at three numbers but we need to understand those numbers to make sure we're doing the equation right. First, we have profit. Second, we have the cost to acquire the property. And third, we have the actual return, which is in the form of a percentage. Let's start with profit. This is the money left after all expenses. And a lot of new investors make the mistake of thinking, I have this much rent coming in, I take out the mortgage, what is left is my profit. Forgetting about, capital expenditures, maintenance, vacancy, things that you set aside money for for future expenses. One of the really good benefits to investing in real estate are the tax benefits. And most investors, when we first start off investing in real estate, have almost zero tax obligations. With depreciation, write-offs, and if you have mortgages, you get to write off the interest, you're probably going to pay zero in taxes. Eventually, though, if you have enough properties paid off and you have enough cash flow coming in, it's entirely possible that you are going to have to pay taxes on some of this income. So depending on the way your portfolio is structured, make sure you're accounting for that. If you want to use a property management company, you're also going to have to account for that. I self-manage and someday I'll make a video on why I don't use a property manager, but not today. The second number is the cost to acquire the property. This is more than just the down payment. We also have closing costs, which in most instances is going to be 2 to 3% of the purchase price of the property, and then any expenses for immediate repairs. You might also have some holding costs. You might not rent it out right away. And the third number is your actual return. This is in the form of a percentage because we're going to take our profit and divide it by the actual amount of money it took to acquire the property. Here are three really quick examples that will make it very easy to understand. If you purchase a property for $100,000 and in the first year you own it, you profit $100,000, you make a 100% return on your money. Making a 100% return would be pretty sweet. If you spend $100,000 to acquire a property and in the first year you profit $50,000, that is a 50% return on your money. A 50% return would still be pretty awesome. If you spend $100,000 to acquire a property, and in the first year you profit $10,000, that is a 10% return on your money. That's the amount that we shoot for, right? 10%? Right. 10% or more. Your market might be a little bit different. You might shoot for an 8% or a 12%. Learn your market to know what your goal should be. One of the reasons I really like real estate is the cash on cash return doesn't count for appreciation, often on four times what I spent because I'm using leverage, and it doesn't count principal pay down, where the tenants actually pay the mortgage off for you. Just pure cash that I can spend, save, or invest. For me, it was pretty simple to figure out what it would take for me to reach financial freedom. Most of us 
could make work optional if we had $30,000 a year coming in that we didn't have to work for. So for every $100,000 I was able to invest in real estate, I would have $10,000 coming back with my goal of a 10% or better cash on cash return. That meant that if I could find a way to spend $300,000 correctly in real estate, I would have $30,000 a year coming in without me having to work for it. For me, 30,000 was a good goal because I was also house hacking, so I didn't have any housing costs. If you need more, you just need to invest more. And one of the things that makes this a very effective strategy is that the 10% or better cash on cash return is for one of the first few years that we invest. Eventually, these numbers get better because the mortgages stay the same and over a few years, rents go up, increasing your profit. And now to cover the flaw in the cash on cash return method for determining whether a rental property is a good investment or not. Investing $100,000 into a property and profiting $10,000 a year to me sounds like a good investment and I would do that purchase almost every day. But what if you spend $1 to acquire a property? That means that in the next year, if you profited $1, that is a 100% return on your money. But is it worth the time and effort to manage a property to make $1 in a year and take all of the risks associated with that? As investors, most of us are aware that there are things like using a VA loan or a 3% down conventional or 3.5% down FHA owner occupied loan to purchase a property with very little and sometimes no money down. Brandon Turner actually made this book on how to do exactly that. And then what if you're house hacking? I've done this twice. First in this duplex, and now I'm house hacking this fourplex. It's usually pretty hard to get a good return when one of your units is not producing any income. So here was my solution and how I make the cash on cash return on investment method work for me. And I think this might break your brain. I do not use the cash on cash return on investment to find out how much I'm going to make. That's not the number I'm looking for. I am looking for a percentage so that I can compare one property to another, so that I make sure I'm buying the one that makes the most sense, where I'm putting my money to work and it's gonna work its hardest. So in order to compensate for things like house hacking or putting a low down payment, which on my first duplex, I only did a 5% down. What I do is I run the numbers as if it's after I've moved out and each unit is rented out and I did 20% down. Because remember, I'm not using this method to find out how much I made. I'm using this method to figure out, out of several different properties, which one's the best one to go for. There are several different ways to look at the numbers on a property. Find the one that works for you helps you sleep best at night. But math is just step one. I also have several criteria that help me limit tenant turnover, make sure my portfolio is protected by being diversified, and if you would like me to make a video that covers my actual criteria that I use step by step to purchase a property, in the comments below put, show me the deets, and I'll make that video. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.